Jim Watt with Reg Guttridge, but first we hear from the MC, Mike Shinfield. Our gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the principal contest of the evening. Frank Warren presents a welterweight contest of 12 three-minute rounds for the welterweight championship of Great Britain, the Commonwealth, and Europe. Introducing in this corner, ladies and gentlemen, from Bermondsey, the European welterweight champion, Lloyd Hannigan. And from Bethnal Green, ladies and gentlemen, the welterweight champion of Great Britain and the Commonwealth, Sylvester Mitty. At the weigh-in at one o'clock today, Hannigan scaled 10 stones, five and three quarter pounds. Mitty, 10 stones, six and a half pounds. The officials for this contest, ladies and gentlemen, appointed by the EBU. Referee is Mr. John Coyle. The judges are Mr. Harry Gibbs and Mr. Mike Jacobs. Timekeeper, Mr. Ray Rice. So there it is then, John Coyle. They're all British officials, by the way, for the European champ. What a jumpy start that is. And not only is my co-commentator Jim Watts sparred with both of these, but we've also got the manager so Terry Lawless here, who used to handle both of them to give us an opinion. So the opening round scheduled, of course, for 12. And in terms of purse money, the precedence goes to the European champion, considered uh, the more prestigious title. First time that they've fought having had what they say probably hundreds of rounds when they were with the lawless camp and now going their separate ways and uh, Hannigan's manager Mickey Duff well known of course in the fight game has flown in especially from uh, Florida where he looks after John Mugabe to be in the corner with Hannigan tonight it's, it's his first one officially under his management so we'll see if it lives up to the tag of the grudge fight there's certainly been some verbals and if they can fight as well as they've been talking they should be in for a good championship I love these black sequin shorts there of Hunnigan with the honey on them and uh, Mitty also had his name on the gold shorts. Well, I've always thought all along that perhaps this fight would not depend solely on skill but on which man can really impose his will on the other they don't have to go looking for any sort of scouting reports they they know how they fight they've had so many sparring sessions and they were a, a bit spiteful i understand well jim this must bring back old times for you having boxed with these boys in the loyalist gymnasium in canning town in london yeah i've smiled a lot of rounds with both of them uh, mainly mitty uh, the main difference I'd say between the, the two of them, uh, Hannigan is probably a little bit more difficult to catch with punches than Mitty. Uh, that's what I found anyway. But Mitty's getting through already. This is a typical start from Mitty. He's trying to push the opponent back. Uh, Hannigan's been trying the clever stuff already, nice little uppercuts. But uh, a good start, we couldn't have complained. A, a good start to the fight. There's a good left hook there for Mitty. That's always been his pet punch, I think. Well, any punch that works is a, is a pet punch, but he, he does like the left hook. Unbeaten, remember now, Hannigan. Box with the London Fisher Club, and Mitty box with the London Repton Club. And I think it's the first fight between West Indians, surely, for a European Championship. I certainly can't remember one, anyway. John Coyle from the Midlands appointed the official referee and it's the full point marking, not the traditional British half points. Well, it's a good opening round this. They're not larking about. Well, I think you get the impression they're pleased to get that one over with and the, I would say that was a signal from Hannigan that they're quite well pleased with the opening round anyway. Got it rid of some of that carefully nurtured hate there's the tale of tapes as they call them in America just a rundown now of Hannigan and he's boxed in America and 
he's, uh, he's won there. And as I say, he's got Nicky Duff working in his corner in the in the black outfit on the outside of the ropes and inside his experienced second, Denny Mancini. So over there in Sylvester Mitty's corner, there's the rundown for him. Knocking on in age terms, but uh, it took some time out of the ring and has had championship cracks before, but uh, he's coming a bit late in life now, isn't he? And he's, he's been doing it very well, I must say, Mitty. And I have to be careful what I say about him because he's not bad at the old verbal ear bashings. Second afterwards. round, round two. Second round, and a bit of quality, fast. It's welterweight boxing there. These, remember, in the latest ratings now by the World Boxing Council and Association, which we've only seen this week, Hannigan's come in at four, and Midigan at Mitty at seven. And there aren't many championships you'll see with British, Commonwealth, European at stake with two genuine contenders for the championship remember it's the americans who rate them well americans and south americans basically so these two fellows are really looking now for a shot at the world of championship of the world because it's the fight traders all say that donald curry and milton mccrory when they settle their argument will give up the championship and these fellows are in the shake-up and the the curry mccrory fight by the way you will also be able to see on ITV on Saturday week. Well, it's a question of out-thinking as well as out-punching each other here, I feel. They, they might have the needle with each other, but there's no lack of respect for boxing ability, I'm sure of that. spared themselves in training for this one you can tell by the sharpness and I love the trim haircuts as well although you don't have to go in training to get your hair cut what do you think yeah, well the punches already are very good I get the impression Hunnigan's punches are a little bit sharper a little bit more powerful at this stage yeah, he's just missed uh, Mitty's whisker a couple of times with nice looking uppercuts there he is more of a stumble than a knockdown but uh, oh he won't like oh, that Mitty did interrupt you he's going to give him the standing mandatory eight count, which is the European rules, by the way. But, well, I thought a punch... standing count as such, but it's... I didn't agree with that, did you? Well, well a punch did knock him. I mean, he, he stumbled, but a punch knocked him over, so I suppose the referee's entitled to give him a count. But uh, no way was he hurt. But uh, Hannigan's looking for him early. Under European rules, they can actually give a standing count without going down, but no British referee has yet done that in the European Championship. And uh, I'm assured that Mr. John Cole will not probably use that rule. But he has to take a mandatory eight, and they don't do that in British Championship fights. Well, we've always known that uh, Lloyd Haddington's got a good punch variety. He brings him in from all angles. He's having a good round there in round two. Just having a walk round there, Hannigan, more or less unwinding. I, I think he didn't. He was not really going to the wrong corner. He knew exactly what he was doing. So there you are, just uh, peering over the lady with the rounds board, and in replay, Jim. Yeah, well, Hannigan's given the impression that he's a little bit stronger than Mitty at the moment. It's like a, a full welter against See, look, a, a light welter. I doubt yeah. whether he really took the punch there. He half fell across him, didn't he? But there you are, it counts as a knockdown. He'll debate that one for the rest of his career, old Sylvester. He'll have a word or a hundred to say about that, won't he? Uh, almost a familiar face on television these days. Ernie Fossey, the matchmaker and trainer. Same counseling uh, Mitty. As I say, they were both formerly with the Terry Lawless camp. To so round three. And uh, the European challenger, Mitty in gold. And the British and Commonwealth challenger, Hannigan in black sequin. Let go, let go. 
Well, certainly a good second round there for Hannigan. Yeah, it has what looked a bit sharper and a bit stronger, which I think might be quite significant. Uh, Hannigan has been a welterweight you know, all his pro career. Mickey has been a lightweight, a light welterweight, and now a welterweight. I don't know if that's going to make a big difference. But the Hannigan certainly looked a little bit stronger in the second round. Well, uh, Sylvester's always say he can react to any given situation, and he's going to need to. Because it's Hannigan well on top. And Mitty, I don't think has ever been floored as a professional, and I think I've seen nearly all his fights. And they're really screaming there in Hannigan's corner, and Mickey Dove, I can see Santa Hannigan box, stick the left hand out, set the man up. Well, let's see now with the old boxing head of Mickey can weather this, uh, Mitty, I should say, could weather this storm. To use one of his typical phrases, he said, I might just old man him out of it. <laughs> oh, what an exchange of blows there. Midi coming back well. A minute to go. here and what a comeback this is by Mickey well under fire at the start sheer grip there isn't it determination what a good championship fight it's turned out to be a rare triple championship a little bit inaccurate there Mickey there they've got to throw a few punches to the body I think they're missing to the head well I we weathered that storm very well there Sylvester Mitty so now let's get an opinion from Terry Lawless with Gary Newborn Terry is this going to last the distance doesn't look like it the way it's going now I don't think I can go 12 rounds at this pace what do you think of it so far uh, I thought the first round was even. I thought uh, Hunnigan won the second round by a point, and I thought Hunnigan won that last round. He had a very good start. Mitty come back in the fight very well, though. By that, you suggest you don't think Mitty's going to survive? Um, well, Mitty had a very good back end of the round that round, so I think the fight, he's still got plenty of fight in him yet. Thank you, Terry. There's the well lived in face of Mickey Duff. I even saw him box when he was a teenager. Now, has uh, been in the top circle of the, the world pros for many years and second out spends a lot of time four. in America. Round four. How do you see it, Jim? Well, I'm a bit more gracious to Mitty. I gave him a share of the second round. Uh, Hannigan did have a good spell at the start of the round. I have Hannigan won one round in front at the minute. But, uh, I think the significant thing is the fact that Hunnigan's punches are troubling Mitty a lot more than Mitty's are troubling Hunnigan. Hunnigan looks the stronger, looks the sharper, he, his punches are flowing more freely than Mitty's. Well, there's one thing, we don't have too many fears with rather the strange scoring of the European continental type judges. Uh, we've got Mike Jacobs and uh, Harry Gibbs working tonight, star class referees on the World Boxing Council list apart from John Coyle and that's because there's two British based fighters uh, for the European otherwise they would need what they call the neutral judges and in fact all of them should be neutral so there's uh, some blood coming from Mitchie's mouth and dripping on his shorts there Looks like developing into a bit of a war of attrition now, doesn't it? 
Yes, a cracking fight. I get the impression there's just a touch of desperation in Mitty's work. He wants to stay close to Hunnigan. He's forcing him back, pushing him back. But he's not landing the classy punches we've seen him landing in the past. So it's as though he realises that he could be in a bit of danger. He's just trying not to give Hunnigan any punching room. I think what he's trying to do is dying, he's dying to outgain him, isn't he, really? Yeah, he's trying to bully him a bit now. This isn't really a bad idea. As I said right at the start, Jim, it's a question of imposing the will on when they're evenly skilled like this, really. Yeah, but this isn't the, the typical classy performance from Mitty. He's running into trouble again. He's making too many mistakes. Actually, in a press conference, Mitty admitted that in the sparring sessions of years ago, when he said, I don't think I was quite right, really, but uh, I'd certainly say Haddigan had a bit of edge over me. I thought it was very honest of him. Messrs Mancini and uh, Duff and Page all working in the corner. And there's a bit of a bonus actually for Hunnigan because Mickey Duff was saying that he wanted to take him to see the Don Curry Milton McCrory fight if he wins tonight as a bit of a bonus. Let's have a look at some replay here, Jim. Just sum that up for me there. Yeah, well, as I say, Mitty seems to be pushing Hunnigan back. There's just a little touch of desperation, and I say he's making more mistakes tonight than I've ever seen him making in his whole career. He's getting caught wrong-footed, as we can see here. Sylvester will have to tighten up and get his uh, boxing back together. And from the different angle, you see, I mean, he's not floundering, really, but as you say, he's just lost a little bit of that poise and composure that we've seen uh, from Mitty in the past, but then uh, credit Hunnigan with making him do that. You see, Sylvester's so, pushing a lot. So round five. He's pushing Hunnigan back, so when Hunnigan steps back, he's forcing himself into making mistakes. Into the fifth then, remember scheduled for 12 for this triple championship. Hannigan 10-5 and three quarters and Mitty 10-6 and a half. And as I say, well in the shake-up for world title fights in the future. Uh, depending of course how Colin Jones decides uh, what he's going to do with his career after a rather sad back injury that he's been suffering from. But Jones actually has been dropped down to number 10 now because of inactivity since he fought on Curry. Definitely got mouth uh, trouble there. I don't know whether it's a tooth loose. I'm guessing a bit with Mitty, but he's uh, certainly bleeding quite heavily from the mouth again. Yeah, he stopped a little bit now, but it was bleeding pretty badly in the previous round. Tell you what, Jim, I'll have a little bet with you. It won't stop him from talking. No, I think we're right there. Hunnigan's managing to get more power into the short punches than Mitty, so this type of fight is probably suiting Hunnigan more. He's turning to self for Hunnigan too. I haven't seen him do that much before, have you? I think you'll see him do some strange things before the night's out. He just does whatever he feels is right at the time. Well, the longer this goes, it's going to be some slog. believe that referee was suggesting that was a slap from uh, Hannigan Jim, did he? Yeah, it was a bit, just the way it was delivered. I mean, he didn't have to warn them because it's not a thing he does regularly. It's just the way that the punch landed. But I don't know why he switched back to orthodox again, but he switched to southpaw. I don't know why he's doing that. Mitty's cut over the right 
he's cut over the eye. He's really in the wars there, isn't he? Teeth are now cut over the right eye. There's some kind of clash in there. You see him blinking and pulling away, Mitty. Well, he's got some good skilled seconds in the corner, getting the coagulates out, and they're going to need to be working hard on this because it's in the round five. You know it's a long way in a championship fight to keep that staunched. Ernie Fossey already there with the swap swab stick and the one in a thousand adrenaline that's allowed by the boxing board of control applies a lot of pressure on there. He certainly had his uh, experience at that and he former boxer himself he suffered a few. They really have to these instant surgeons these fellows and I'm just just allowing him a bit of a, a gargle anyway. So I don't really we can't tell whether it's uh, he's got that teeth trouble but he certainly has got a problem there and as we can see with that cut eye now that doesn't necessarily write the fighter off obviously it never helps Jim but uh, we've seen many come from behind no, to win I think Mickey has enough in his mind at the minute without Second having to worry about Round a cut eye six. he always seems to be forcing himself on his work isn't flowing out the way Hunnigan's is and Sylvester seems to be forcing all the time pushing himself on to Hunnigan Well, in boxing parlance, Jim, I mean, Hunnigan more than ever fancies the job, doesn't he, now? Right, step back! Come out! Look, his eyes leaking again already. Not a, a difficult position. Yes, he's, he's got to give him another standing eight count. And this time, Mitty doesn't appear to be protesting in round six. And that definitely is the first time I've seen him on the floor as a pro. If we ignore the first one. And I tell you, the referee's having a, a long and hard look there at Mitty, hardly taking his eyes off him, as he, can, he knows which is the man in trouble. Obviously, you've got to give them every chance in a championship fight. without it being untidy because it's a good enough fight without that and uh, certainly punishing enough in this case mostly for Mitty in this round <laughs> just always have that on your mind in the ring Jim when you know you've got the, the eye cut like that just wondering how bad it is because you're the only one really who can't see it properly yeah. or at all in fact well, it's certainly a problem, but I don't really think it's had any bearing here. I think uh, Hunnigan's on top at the moment simply because he's performing better than Mitty. And I think at the end of this round, I'll have Hunnigan three rounds in front, which is uh, pretty comfortable at this stage. Oh, yes, no question about that, is there? And I'm sure that's uh, unless as Paul Gibson Jacobs would have it. But uh, the way it's going, I don't think we're going to need any mathematics, are we? Good credit there as the clock count down there for the round with Mitty trying to come back. And uh, I don't think there's too much danger of Huntington punching himself out. He, he tends to have a few rests, but now here he's coming back right at the end as well. So the eighth round. Just a little bit too much. Vaseline there says referee Coil and just stabs it off. Not allowed to what they call extra protection above the waist other than wearing a gum shield. Well, as uh, 
Terry Lawless and Jim Watt have both said Mitty behind now. It's, has he got time to make it up or has he been in the wars a bit too much? But he's proved in the past he's not a bad stayer. But then again, uh, can't knock an unbeaten record and that's what, what Hannigan has. He's in a couple of fights in the States. He's admittedly not in world company, but just the win there is good. Showmanship there. Lloyd's kind of famous for that, yeah. I think I think the difference now is that Lloyd's enjoying the work. Uh, Sylvester knows it's an uphill struggle all the way, and I don't really think he can expect it to get much better. Uh, the, the only hope for victory now, I suppose, is uh, if Hannigan starts running out of steam. What's but the problem really here? The, the doctor now is being called. They do this in the European rules. And Dr. Adrian White, Whiteson, uh, the specialist, actually, the, the boxing doctor, as we call him, is, is having a good look. And it's, it's all over in the eighth round. And it's obviously deeper than it looked for the Nuss uh, outside the ring thought it was. And uh, really, they did a good job keeping him going that long. And promoter Warren there commiserating with Mitty because he's not the sort of fellow that gets stopped too easily. And you don't often see that, do you? The, the fighter lifting the manager up there. Well, you know the old gag that he gives him 75% of all the earns, please, the manager. After one minute, 47 seconds of round eight, ladies and gentlemen, Mitty has sustained a cut eye. On the advice of the doctor, the referee has stopped the contest. The winner and the British Commonwealth and European welterweight champion, Lloyd Hannigan. Well, certainly an excellent win there, and he's... Uh, Getting a congratulation there from the promoter who actually manages the other fighter. But it's all nice sporting finish for what was a grudge fight. And as I say, he's now going to watch the Curry and McCrory fight as a win bonus for him now, Lloyd Hannigan. And now there he is, there's the, the, ch the triple champion talking to Gary Newman. Well, Lloyd, I don't think there's too much doubt about that. You always seem to be in the lead. Yeah, I was just taking my time. I want to punish him. I want to really punish him, he's been saying some bad things about me. And I really want to punish him. I didn't really want to knock him out, put a game fight. I didn't want to knock him out, I just want to punish him. You seriously believe out. that? You seriously? I seriously believe it. I'll just put my place in my shots, punish him. In the last round when the referee just stopped it, I was just beginning to flow. I was just a bit to put my punches together, and the referee was sensible to stop the fight. Was it a bad cut? Game yeah. Game fight, he was bleeding from about the first round, and he kept going. I didn't, thought, I didn't start, just didn't give up. Were you surprised at the way he tried to bully you at the start? Yeah, I was very surprised because I thought he was going to run away. I thought he was going to run away. He came to me. I've been practicing in the gym with me and Charlie Page, my trainer. We've been doing it for two months now. I've been training solid. I haven't left my house in two months. I've been to bed at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock. The last two months, I've been up at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. I was trained for this fight. I was in the best shape of my life. In view of the bad chemistry between the two of you, what does that win mean to you? This win means everything to me because if I, if I had lost to Silver Smithy, I could never walk the street of South London again. That's More the way I felt. What it means is he's going to go with me. He's leaving on the 5th of December to watch the...